So in a previous video, I showed that I was building a 10 meter heavy duty dipole. Well, I've completed it now. Here's the box. Uh, inside here is a toroid that's got a few um, wraps around of RG58 around a FT240 Mix 43 toroid. And you'll see here I've got an up arrow, and that's because there's two drain holes here at the bottom just in case any water does get in the box it can drain out because this antenna is going to be mounted vertically. Now, I had a couple of questions on this antenna, and the first one was this mounting support here, this square bit of uh, tubing, does that affect the antenna at all? Well, the first thing that I'll say is, is that, as you can see, if you can imagine that this is already vertically mounted, so this is the way that it's pointing sort of up and down, the earth is this direction, the sky is that direction, and there's going to be a horizontal um, sort of cross brace or a horizontal pole that this mounts to, you'll notice that this is not really in the plane of the dipole. So it's not behind the dipole, it's sort of off at a right angle. Now I modeled that in MMANA. So what we'll do is we'll jump over to MMANA and I'll show you that this, uh, how it may or may not affect the antenna's operation. This is MMANA antenna modeling software. It is free to download. Just Google MMANA-GAL basic. Uh, you probably need to watch a couple of YouTube videos and learn a little bit how to drive it. Uh, I'm still learning myself, but if we go ahead and open up my antenna, this large element here is the tower or it's simulating the tower and this smaller um, element here is the dipole. But if we zoom in, you will see that at the back, or actually not at the back, off to the side of the antenna is the mounting uh, aluminium mast, which we've got here. Now, if I double click on that, you can see that I've got a length of one meter and it is approximately 1.23 meters in the X plane. So that's in this plane here, which is um, where the ant well it's simulating that it's mounted um, mounted below where the or off to the 90 degree angle that I explained before about the antenna so uh, it's not basically um, in the same plane as the antenna it's spaced off I've, I've estimated I think I estimated about 20 millimeters of spacing um, I don't think I actually estimated I'm pretty sure that I measured 20 millimeters of space between that mounting square tubing and the uh, round tubing for the element. So uh, if we go ahead and have a look at our frequency of 29.7 megahertz here, and we'll just do real ground and we go start. I've modeled it here with the spacing off of the tower. I think the spacing is around about, well, the spacing is 1.25 meters off of the tower here. And you can see our current distribution here. There's a little bit of uh, current flowing here in the red on the tower, a little bit here obviously on the antenna with our current peak and dip. And you can also see there's a little bit, uh, not a lot, a little bit on that mounting, um, or mounting support tube, I'll call it, that square tubing. So uh, that's the, the current distribution. But the thing that I'm interested in is the matching so we've got 50 ohms with an swr 1.02 very little reactants and our far field plot here we've got an essential we don't have an omnidirectional um, pattern there's a little bit of negative gain in the uh, 180 degrees because of the tower which is acting as a reflector but the good thing is is we get additional gain in the direction that the antenna is pointing. So in this case, in the uh, X plane direction. So you can see here um, in the direction. So here's our tower, here's our antenna. So basically in this direction towards the uh, towards there. So uh, that's looking good. The far field plot is looking good. Our elevation angle is looking good at about five degrees. We get about 3.1 dBi of gain. Uh, maximum gain is at about 10 degrees, which is, you know, not too bad. A little bit of a dip in here, but still a bit of gain. So uh, so that's looking okay. Now, keeping all of that in mind, let's remove that element. So uh, we've got this element here, which is Y number two, to see what happens. So we delete that out. We've still got our dipole. We've still got the 
tower support here. We've just removed that uh, little bit of metal off of the dipole antenna to see what difference it makes. So let's go and run that again. So you can see here that the resistance hardly ever changes. The reactance goes up by two ohms, which is nothing really. The SWR 1.05 and our far field plots are pretty much exactly the same. So that kind of, when I ran that plot and I looked at the modeling, I kind of looked at that and said, well, that's not going to change too much. The next question that I also got was what kind of coax am I going to use? And all I've done is I've just used some RG58 here with an end connector that I've crimped on the end. And I've just come out of a gland here at the back. So uh, that's all that, that is. Pretty simple, a couple of meters just to make sure that I can get to any coax that is on the tower. Check out my other videos here on the 10 meter repeater build and we'll see you in the next video, hopefully with this antenna up on the tower.